In Nyanza province of Kenya, along the shores of Lake Victoria, live a vulnerable group of young girls who were married at an early age. The province is known for having a high rate of early marriage. According to the Kenya Demographic Health Survey, more than half of all girls in the region are married by the age of 19 and 9% of all girls are married by the age of 15. Since these girls were married at a young age, they face numerous challenges, ranging from high rates of HIV AIDS and other sexual transmitted infections, early pregnancy, school dropout, domestic violence, to poverty. A married adolescent is somebody who gets married before attaining the age of 18. In this project, we were working with girls who were between the ages of 13 and 18 years. Married adolescents are particularly vulnerable because they are isolated from information that are related to either HIV, STI or other health related information. The married adolescents face their fair share of challenges. When you are married, newly married during the weeding season, you go to the shamba, you weed maybe the whole day without reasoning up because you, you get ashamed of say that, that the people will say that Mrs. So and so is a weak lady. So they can weed the whole day. And after weeding, you come back, you bring water, you come back, you cook, you come back, you do the, the, the daily course without murmuring because they do not have reasoning power. I am a young mother and a fishmonger. My biggest challenge has been to balance my work and taking care of my children. I'm often forced to carry my child on my back as I go to the lake to look for fish. In 2008, the National AIDS Control Council of Kenya ranked Nyanza province as having the highest HIV prevalence rate in the country. 15% of the population is HIV positive, which is nearly double the country's overall prevalence rate. The disease is most prominent in the towns and centers along the Lake Victoria's beaches. For example, in Kisumu, 33% of the married adolescents were found to be HIV positive compared to 22% for the young and married girls of the same age. In my area, that is northeast, in Rachonyo North, that is in Konyango, the poverty rate is a bit high. So they normally go out to get some men who are working in order to earn their living. In addition to that, uh, they are not even also given that power of leadership in their homes, maybe to say what is wrong or what, uh, what is right. When a girl marries at a young age, there are many rippling effects, not only on her life, but that of her children. Young married adolescents are often isolated from their peers and become economically dependent on their husbands. Since they are considered to be of a low social status, these girls are not allowed to participate in decision making and often they are not in a position to effectively advocate in matters concerning their own health or that of their children. Even the simple things like using mosquito nets, treatment for their children when ill, utilizing family planning methods or accessing services at a health facility require negotiation and the approval of their husband. One of the most common and yet harmful practices relating to the beach activities is the sex for fish trade. At this beach, we engage in fish mongering. In this business, women cannot easily get fish unless they strike a sex deal with a fisherman. If you don't have such a person, you can easily lose out in the business and therefore your family may go hungry. So one is forced to befriend a fisherman whose HIV status she doesn't know. This way, you may become infected with sexually transmitted diseases, hence infecting your spouse. This affects the young, most of whom have run away from school to get married. Pat began an intervention called the Married Adolescent Project in two districts of Nyanza province, Homa Bay and Rachuonyo. 
The intervention primarily focused on three components, education and advocacy to young girls and their husbands on the risk of HIV, increasing access to voluntary counseling and testing services for HIV couples, and supporting the development of life skills and economic empowerment of these young girls. The project utilized four main activities, community theater, a mentorship program for girls, married adolescent discussion clubs to improve life skills and build capacity for decision making, and economic empowerment and advocacy in the community using religious and social structures. There were three main objectives for the married adolescent project. First was to design strategies and information that would pass information around the risk of married adolescents and these strategies were to be done either through radio and through community drama and mentorship and through the religious leaders. Secondly also was to support and uh, link the married couples for VCT services so that there is uh, VCT for couples, VCT for the married adolescents so that they get to know their HIV status and with this they start prevention early and are able to manage their households. This was a way of keeping the marriages safe. The third one was also to support the married adolescent in their own setups within their marriage through the married adolescent clubs. In these clubs then they were able to discuss issues around marriage, issues around communications and any other related issues that were coming up out of which they can borrow experiences from the mentors which they were working with and which they were helping out to support them. The last one was to also uh, identify areas of livelihood strategies that they can pick up so as to raise their self-esteem and to make them have decisions in their own setup. I am an injectable as my family planning option. I learned this through a group and also got support from my husband who has been keen on following our group activities of which he approved of. Our first children were a big problem to us. Now that we have spaced our children, we feed and clothe them well. We have also planned how we shall save for the education fees. Path trained community theatre groups in a form of participatory educative theatre known as Magnet Theatre. Magnet Theatre is designed to entertain and educate as well as involve audience members in the action and encourage the kind of participation and reflection that is key to sustain behaviour change. These community theatre groups targeted groups of young people and hosted regular theatres within the beaches, churches and markets. I have learned a lot from the performance, how to live at home and the village. We should know our HIV status and how to take care of our status. I decided to change my behaviour after watching these performances. I have learned that it is important to be faithful. Path also began a mentorship program which incorporates older married female members of the society. The mentorship program carefully selects and trains older married female members of the community on the unique challenges and needs facing the young married adolescents. The mentors, who are regarded as role models in the community, are identified through partnership with the religious institutions. These mentors provide ongoing support and advice to the young girls on life skills such as good communication, self-esteem, making decisions, and resolving conflicts. Isdora mentors a number of young girls under her care. She tells us more about it. I'm not only a mother, but also a farmer and a businesswoman. I'm a Christian who has chosen to be a mentor because of my friendly relationship with the young generation and because I love development. I have undergone family planning, counseling, TB, HIV, uh, male circumcision training, among others that promote the adoption of healthy behavior. I understand the plight of the married adolescents as I have always shared in the joy, sorrow, and decision making. Economic empowerment are also critical components of the married adolescent program. Through regular meetings and dialogue sessions, mentors build the capacity of these young girls to set goals, make decisions, take action to prevent and treat various health issues, resolve conflict, and improve communication within the family, as well as learn how to generate income. Through this skill building, 
the girls have been able to boost their economic well-being. Christian group. I am a member of CASE Married Adolescent Group. I double up as a mentor and a secretary. The group was started in 2005 through paths facilitation that worked with the church as an entry point. In 2007, we initiated a merry-go-round to improve our financial status. This was after a two-year period of reproductive health learning. This initiative has made it possible for mentors to purchase goods that were placed under a rotational loaning scheme. As a result of the loan program run by the Kase Women Group, Judith Akinyi Otieno, a married adolescent, received her first goat. I named my goat Nora. Nora was a social worker who worked for PATH. I have benefited a lot from the good, especially after it gave birth. I have plenty of milk. I am sure that one day when I'm pressed, I can sell it and get some money. Through the Married Adolescent Project, PATH has reached a large number of married adolescent girls, their spouses and other community members. Since the Married Adolescent Project has demonstrated remarkable success, PATH has scaled up the program throughout the entire Western Kenya region. The program has been introduced in an additional 18 districts through other projects. PATH has developed a mentor guide and trans trainers, mentors and staff on the program. I am Caleb, a resident of Wang Ching village, a father of four, a polygamist with the two wives. I have attended the married adolescence program. I have found it beneficial. My first wife is my age mate, and I would consider my second wife a child. We attend outreaches together, and through this I have realized my younger wife has learned a lot, especially on issues of behavior change communication and reproductive health. There has been reduced conflict at home. The Married Adolescent Project has changed the lives of many young girls and the results have borne fruit. Many of these married adolescents now reach out to fellow married adolescents as volunteers, encouraging them to go for counseling and testing or to begin income generating activities. The impact of the program is far reaching and beneficial not only to these young married girls but also their children and their husbands. Yeah.